What's up, people? Yet another edition of the New Breed Podcast, the world's best music show, talking about everything brutal, new death, hard, slam, grind, thrash, core metal. I'm one half of your host, Jay Jay Horskow. With me, I have my partner in crime, the notorious Tim, Tim Anderson Jr. Tim, how's it going? Great. Fantastic. So what are we doing this week, folks? So this week, we're actually pulling something out of the archives. This is the, I think this is the, either the first or second interview that Tim and I have ever done. Uh, with Jordan Sloan from Zone Zero. This we did, I don't know, Tim, four years ago, five years ago, something like that. Yeah, probably about three. Yeah. Um, oh man, it's just, even way, even still, it's quite long. So we're gonna we're gonna re-release this one. I don't think we released it under the Ill uh New Breed banner. No. I think we released it under uh, I think it was Ill Street News. So some of you may not have heard this, but it was a really good conversation at the time. We really enjoyed chatting with Jordan. So we're gonna run it this time and, and hope you enjoy something from the archives. So listen in and enjoy. Yeah, so just so you know, this episode will be video and for the intro and then the rest will be just audio so if you're listening on youtube hey check it out man but it's a good one so we thought let's bring it out and there you go so thanks for listening peace see you jordan yes sir what's up man tim and tim and adam from Mill street news and we also have jay here what's up oh sweet what's, what's up jay? On? <clears throat> ha- happy fucking birthday man dude thank you thank happy you. birthday man <laughs> So, so, so what's going on? You enjoying your day? Oh yeah. It's been, it's been great. Um, didn't really, didn't really do a whole lot of shit, which is actually perfect. Like I was always, you know, wanted to do more shit when I was younger, like for my birthday, I'm like, Oh, I gotta do everything. And today I woke up and like, you know, I can do literally nothing and be satisfied with my day. <laughs> I hear that man. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. Nope. Like we just exactly. walked around, took some pictures and stuff. And then like went and like, I forget how we where all we went today, but we just kind of, kind of did our thing when got like coffee took some pictures and that was like the day oh there you so. go and now you're ending it with us yeah oh yeah which is perfect <laughs> <laughs> so i know that you were on well obviously i know this you were on new breed and we talked about zone zero but we're gonna do it again because you're in the hardcore scene so i feel like people should know your bands and all that right in the scene so we're going to talk, you know, a, a whole different group of people is going to hear about you. So I, I think it'll be, Sweet. you know, it'll be a good conversation, even though we're going to talk about a little bit of the same stuff, but it don't really fucking matter. So oh, it's all good. I, I'll talk about hardcore any day, specifically like 90s <laughs> New York hardcore. Oh, there you like, go. I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say 90s New York hardcore, are we talking like Madball, like Agnostic Front? Um, I would say that like... <sighs> I, I'm a big fan of Madball. I'm a huge fan of Biohazard. Okay. Um, like one of my favorite bands of all time, bands like Marauder, um, shit like that. Like Marauder, like <clears throat> you could, Marauder could turn like the most peaceful person into like a cold blooded killer. <laughs> like I, I swear to God, like you can't put on Master Killer and not just want to beat this shit out of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good disc. Right, Great. But really anything. Like I, my favorite thing was like, um this i think it's on youtube people have probably seen it before but it's that like um like nyhc documentary and they talked to all the dudes like ezek from crown of thorns oh, and stuff yeah, like oh, that. Yeah, dude. yeah that that's one of my like i i will every time like i don't go searching for it but every time it'll pop up in my suggested i'll just sit there i'm like i'll check out a little bit of this and i end up watching the whole thing and i'm like oh shit <laughs> like i had to sit and I'll, I'll i even sit through the rick to life parts <laughs> the Isaac interview is great, especially like the, the before and after where it's oh, young Isaac so talking shit on Rick to life for all his tattoos. And then it's the follow on episode where uh, the follow on interview where he's completely covered in fucking tattoos. And he said, yeah, I kind of so feel like a jag off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's even funnier watching that interview and then like going on Twitter and seeing Isaac on Twitter. It's he is the funniest fucking guy on Twitter. Oh, he's a lunatic. Like, he's a lunatic. I could, I could I could wipe everyone from my Twitter except for like him and Ice T and just have like the there best. Uh, uh, Jordan, have you ever listened to? He doesn't do it frequently, but the podcast that he does with Jay Reason, have you listened to it? Oh no, dude! I he, gotta get on. Oh, that. I didn't, Jay I didn't Reason know that deserves is. a fucking a Purple Heart, right? Because he is literally <laughs> corralling these lunatics. There's an episode <laughs> corralling where, where, where they're um, it's all the guys from uh, not Crown of Thorns. What was the band he did afterwards? Scarhead. Yeah, and they're talking oh, like the history God. of Scarhead, and they're all like oh, man. drinking and having a great time. Yeah. And Jay Reason's like trying to get an interview out of them, and it was it was insane. Oh my Yo, God. that last what a demo they did, dude. That three songer, dude. Yeah, yeah. 
they were partying Jesus up. Christ. Incredible. So Jordan, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, give the easy lead in here, right? So you're talking about New York hardcore. You're, you're one of your bands. And I, and I told Tim, this is great that you're back on. So we can talk about like the 8,000 other things you're doing. Um, <laughs> one of your bands is zone zero. So I'm assuming you're a VOD fan, right? Oh, absolutely. I think that's like when I talk about like top three, I'd say like them, like I'd say like VOD is number one, obviously. Like I even, cause I saw somebody comment. I remember, I remember it was like, I was going through the comments on when you guys posted on the new breed page, the interview I did before. And someone's like, I wonder if he likes, um, what's that from bliss to uh, what's that? Devastation. Yep. From bliss to devastation. Yeah. Like I wonder if he like that as much as I do. And I was like, of course, like it bridges both. Yeah. Like I love like old New York hardcore shit. And like, especially like, cool. They wrote a fucking puddle of mud record. Dope. I like that too. <laughs> you and, like, Jay almost spit his beer out. <laughs> what you, so what do you think of blood so simple? Good. I, oh my God, I could talk about that being all day. Um, that first record especially is incredible. I think that's like, it's such a weird, like, I think I talked about this last time, but I think like when 2005 hit, like this is just cause I was a 10 year old kid back then. Like, I don't know shit about shit. So I could be talking crazy talk, but like, um, it just seemed like everyone who was like in like the Janko new metal phase, like as soon as 2005 hit, they like cut the sleeves off their shirts, put on some like cargo shorts <laughs> and like, like camo cargo shorts tied a bandana around their head and like started writing faster shit and yeah. like got a little bit. They're like, no, no, no. Put on a bike metal. messenger bag. Yep. Metal. Yep. Yep. And they all started playing ESPs. Oh yeah. Like that's, that's the whole thing is like, they went with like ESPs and like, Oh man, it was every, every like album title name was like some stupid long sentence all written in cursive. And like, it was just, it, they, like, everyone was like, Oh no, we've still played new metal stuff. But we just look like kill switch. Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> you, you could have went the uh, primitive route, you know, that was, oh, yeah. That, yeah. That were, oh. yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, it, but Jordan makes a good point though, right? Thinking back to that time. Right. So at this point that, that victory wave of hardcore is for slowing down, right? The earth crisis, yeah. the snap case, the hate breed, you know, hate breed their own animal. Um, and then you had the, the knock on second and fir- third wave hardcore behind that was starting to peter out. And you had new metal was petering out. So all these guys that were in new metal bands, like, like Jordan said, right. They either cut their, cut their sleeves off, got cargos and, and called themselves a metal band, or they looked at as I lay dying and kill switch. And they said, Hmm, we're going to dye our hair black. Yeah. And we're going to do some, pinch harmonics and some, you know, uh, yeah. Randy road squeals, lift weights. Yeah. We're, we're going to lift weights. Lift weights. And it's you yeah. know funny. Chimera did like both those things. <laughs> like yeah. They just yeah, put right. those together. <laughs> that's fine. And it's so <laughs> sick. And like, the thing is like, that's another thing I love because I'm like, Oh cool. I also love like the cool drop C metal core stuff, but I love new metal. I'm like, cool. So that means I love the first three, like Chimera records, like first three or four Chimera records are flawless. I think that like, I just, that band did the right thing. Like that first record's fun. And then when you get to like pass out of existence or not pass out, um, when you get to, uh, impossibility, impossibility. Yeah. Um, it's just like crushing. Like there's the the hardest breakdowns on that. Like, um, end of like uh, the end of uh, eyes of the criminal, like it just hits that like build up and then it just hits that real slow. Like I'm like, every time I'm in the car, like, I'll be hauling our bass player to practice from my other band. We'll, we'll be driving. He's a big like kill switch fan and everything. Um, I'm in another band with him and he uh, will be driving and that part will come on and we'll both just be like, Jesus Christ. Every time we'll freak out in the car. We're like, Holy <laughs> fuck. I think, I think they're the best band to come out of Ohio ever. Um, I would argue that and say integrity, but I'll uh, give you that. One. Uh, okay. I would, I'll, I'll, that would be an I interesting court that case. Band. That would be an interesting will, court case, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Cause like, uh, I was, um, me and a, I had, I had another buddy and I had, um, before I knew that these were kind of shitty, like the, the gator, the face gator masks or whatever, like the ones you just kind of pull up. Um, I have, uh, uh, one of those and it's the integrity, like the skull thing. And, uh, a buddy of mine and I were talking and he was, I was wearing that and like an integrity shirt. And I have like these integrity sweatpants and I was just decked out in all this integrity stuff. And he's like, you own a lot of, he's like, you own a lot of merch for an okay band. <laughs> and I was like, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, I will say this. Uh, there's probably very few as influential bands coming out of Ohio as Integrity. Right. Like well, they, yeah. The, oh, ring sure. worm. Long reach. Yeah. Ringworm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They're oh, still the thing, killing it. Like, 
Knox from Zone Zero, like he loves bands like Ringworm and stuff like that. And so I'll give him that. Like I made a list and I was like, oh, here's my favorite bands to like come out of like because I'm I always my girlfriend's from Cleveland and I'm I'm from somewhere else in Ohio, not Columbus, but uh um she's from Cleveland. And so I always used to shit talk I'm like, oh Cleveland sucks, Columbus is better. And then I'm like, but y'all got the better bands. I was like, we got like nothing. I was like, you guys, we got fucking 21 pilots. Yeah, yeah. And you, there guys you, go. got, and you guys got like all the good hardcore bands. I was like, like bleep, one life crew. Um, but uh <laughs> then you got you got Southern Ohio, you got the more metal stuff, like you got Premonitions like, of War. Twelve tribes out of dude, Dayton. Premonitions yeah. of War is Toledo. Toledo. Yeah, dude. dude. I still I still listen to Adam. You you were ever a big fan of that? Premonitions of War? Uh yeah, I really like uh Left to uh Left in Kowloon is true. Awesome, yeah, dude. Dude. That one, but true face of panic. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. one's disgusting. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. Eyes Upon yeah. Separation out of Ohio? Yeah, I think I they're a think Southern. So. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was that, that was, one record, dude. That, that I hope she's having nightmares. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> yeah, that is that's nightmare fucking music right it, there. It, yeah, it is. So, Jordan, let's let's talk a little bit about more about your band. So, um, obviously the name the namesake comes from VOD. Um, you right. and you and you started out as a one man band, and you very quickly have gone to a full lineup, writing new stuff. Can we talk about that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, like I told you guys last time, like it started out as a real like we tried to be like disembodied sounding and stuff like that. We tried to do the whole panic chord stuff. And I just was, I was, I was playing guitar for it and I was like, this isn't fun. And uh, like our, our guitar player now, Rob played bass in it. So he's been in this with me almost the entire time. Um, and then uh, I was like, this isn't fun. I was like, I'm just doing this because every other band in a hardcore is doing this right now. Like they're, they're tuning down to B or C and then playing the, they're doing the panic chord stuff. I was like, this is, everyone's covering seven stitches and it gets old after like every week they yeah. tune down a step like, oh, no. <laughs> like, like first first band i saw do it was uh it was like code orange in 2015 and i was like this is ridiculous this is insane and then like, everyone's like cool now we gotta listen to disembodied and spend a hundred dollars on discogs and uh <laughs> on one cd and uh so did that for a while and was like ah this is kind of stupid and then like tried to write a little more like newer harm's way style where it was just like straight up like just crushing riffs and i was like damn this isn't really working like i can't do this i was like i need to i need to write like and any other riffs i i did were like real new metal sounding riffs i'm like maybe i'll just say fuck it and start a new metal band like i'll just keep the name and do a new metal band and so i wrote songs with the intention of playing guitar then i was like fuck it i'll just do some songs on vocals and if we find a singer whatever i'll just we'll just start over and then i was like hmm never mind i think i like singing like well i tried to do the machine head thing and play guitar and sing at the same time and i got through like one practice of just playing with guitar and then like i played <laughs> drum practice with the pa and i was like okay cool i was like okay i'm starting to sound like newer machine head but i'm not quite as good as old machine head so i was like i am just gonna start uh maybe i'll just sing and find some people and like I, I was funny was I put out the song with this me uh, guitar player, Rob, and then our bass player. And we didn't have a drummer or a, a guitar, another a second guitar player yet. And then our second guitar player, Johnny was just a friend of ours. And he was like, this shit's so sick. And I was like, I know you play guitar and you're not doing anything right now. So like, why don't you just play guitar for me? I didn't even, I didn't even ask. I was like, just come to practice. You're playing guitar. And he was like, okay, cool. And so we all kind of showed up. And within the first 30 seconds, the first song we practiced was losing my grip from the EP. And, Within like 30 seconds, that intro kicking in, I was like head banging and just full of adrenaline. I just, I was like, this is it. This is the band. And well, now we obviously have a different drummer. Me and me and Tim talked about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so just we're working on new shit right now. We have management and all this fun stuff now. And it's, it's a big, it's starting to be a big boy thing. And we're just trying to work our asses off and make the dream a reality. So well, I, I was going to say, too, uh, what you, about what you just said about management and stuff. There, there's no way you guys aren't getting fucking signed. You, it's, oh, too, yeah. it's too fucking catchy. It's inevitable. It's too we're talented. Trying, we're, we're, really, we're really working on it. Um, we, have, uh, we have a uh, our manager now. Our, our manager um, also manages Beartooth and Siler. Okay. And, um, They're adjacent. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, but he just, uh, <laughs> funny story, uh, I hope he doesn't text me and yell at me for this, which is, he wouldn't, but it's just really funny. But, uh, uh, so Bear Two's guitar player knew our old drummer, Kevin, and, uh, their guitar player, Zach. And he came to a show of ours, like the lat it was like the day that lockdown started. And we played like one, like one more show. And then we obviously stopped. 
And then, um, but he came and watched us. And then from what I've, from what I've been told by Kevin, our old drummer, which I don't know how much of this is true. And if it is, I will get it tattooed on my body. But, um, evidently right after our set, Zach texted their manager, which is our, now our manager and said, if you don't work with this band, I'll drive my brand new truck into a church. (laughs) <laughs> and i i sincerely i've yet to ask him this i really want to know if it's true but if it is like i will get a truck like driving through a church like on my body <laughs> just to, just to lock that in there because that's just like an insane story and uh it, it, it's... but yeah we he's uh like we're we're doing it we're uh we plan to um i think in like april we're gonna go do some more stuff uh, with uh our producer jacob um he's a cool dude he actually if you guys you guys are familiar with boba flex obviously yeah um he uh they're they're a new band called the lonely one <laughs> and uh right. he he's been doing their stuff too so we kind of got hooked up with him and he's a he's a great dude and we uh he made gray sound probably as massive as it possibly could like i had that song written since last january like 2020 and then just had sitting on it and we were gonna jam it and we were thinking about doing stuff and then our manager was like let's do a let's do a song and let's do a video and everything and let's let's get this stuff out there so we picked that one and we just kind of brought it to him and we just sat was like i always try to make my songs like at least the demo sound as cool as they possibly can and then when i brought it to him i was like oh you made this sound even cooler like this is just massive sounding production so uh, we're doing another song it's very like there's no screaming it's very like lincoln parky like very Uh hybrid sounding and so um uh mixed with like i stuck like a primer 55 breakdown in there like a little bit (laughs) and uh so hopefully that'll that'll be really cool but yeah we're just working on as much new stuff as possible well well well, dude i mean i know i said this last time but like it has to be said again for the people listening because i want the people listening to fucking listen to the ep and all the stuff like you have one of the fucking best voices in this scene right now dude like i'm not even trying to bullshit you bro like I was fucking blown away when I listened to that Deftones cover, like blown, blown away. Like this I dude, to, that is the best fucking Deftones <laughs> cover I've ever heard. I tried as much as I possibly could to like, uh, I tried to uh, like emulate it, but not copy it. Like I right. wanted to do my own thing, yeah. but like still, I didn't want to sound like I was just some pop singer coming in and singing on a, on a, you know, a, a Deftones cover. Cause everyone's like, um, you know, there's, I've read online, everyone's like, you know, what's funny is like for some Deftones catchy songs, like Chino can't sing for shit. <laughs> it's so funny. Cause I think he's a terrific singer, which is, which is crazy. But like, so I was like, I got to go with this and like make it still sound melodic and pretty. I was like, but I still got to bring the whole like chaotic factor to it. Like he was kind of crying. I have this, um, this VHS tape and it's like warp tour 98 and there's like footage of all these bands and one of them is is Deftones playing uh, My Own Summer. And it's just like super crazy, but it's still super tight. And I was like, I, I got to do that. And so when we were when I recorded it, I just it was it was really funny. I was I, I recorded all of our the vocals for that in our practice space. I just like brought my computer in there, stuck it on top of somebody's amp and then like just plugged all my stuff in. And uh, I was trying to sneak it in because I was like, cool, it's like midnight. No one's here. I can I can do these vocals. And like three things and it showed up to practice. And I'm like, fuck, you gotta be kidding me. And so like in I'm like doing it like in between takes and like I did all the clean stuff first. So I know I'm like, I'm like, does the scream stuff isn't too strenuous, but like I want to make sure all the cleans are perfect before I start trying to blow my voice out. And so by the time I got all the cleans done, all these bands had left and I was there by myself. And there was one guy like down the hall in his room, just working on stuff and just being super quiet. But I got to the parts where I'm just yelling like, Far! and I'm like, he's probably thinks I'm fucking psycho right now. <laughs> so I'm just yelling like, I don't care where I'm just screaming my fucking head, like head off. Well, but, uh, the, the thing about that song and record is like the nuances of his voice back then. They're, they're hard to emulate. Yeah. yeah. He, he's a very hard vocalist to get down and and you fucking nailed it dude like <clears throat> like even adam over here is not the biggest fan of new metal but like yeah it, when he heard your stuff he was like yo this is like next fucking level shit and i said i told I you that. dude like it's yeah, yeah it's you, you guys like i'm calling it right now it's gonna be album of the year for me 
I, I really, I really hope it'll be this year. I really do. It fucking I'm, better I'm, be. We're, we're, we're trying. We're really trying. <laughs> we, I mean, like uh, where we record is right here in Columbus, so it's not that hard. Like we, okay. I think everything we did for Gray, we did most of the stuff on our own time um, at our bass player's uh, home studio. Like we did all guitars and bass, and uh, I did, did vocals and stuff there. And then um, our drummer Mike did vocals at our producer's place, and then we just kind of pieced it together from there. And uh, we even like did a good amount of time because we also recorded a cover. And uh, um, so that actually turned out really well. And uh, not sure when that one will be out. I can't tell you what it is, but it's uh, it turned out really sick. It's not It's not a band you'd expect at all. Okay, um, so I'm expecting but, uh, a I'm expecting a Facebook message of what that is later, right? So <laughs> do we have to place bets? It's it's either Carcass or Bolt Thrower, right? <laughs> Dude, I would love to cover something from Carcass. I would love to cover like something. Like going in the complete opposite direction. Two solid right? choices. Huh? Yeah, I but mean, uh, no, it's 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 crazy. <laughs> like it's uh, um, but yeah, but Chino, I think with that, like Chino's one of my like top five singers of all time. Um, number one is Mike Patton. Like he's the man yeah. that dude's a, like, I, it's funny. That's funny. Like, I was just thinking, of, I was just thinking about that. Yeah. Mike Patton's just like, I, I love anything he does. Like I was a fan of Mr. Bungle before I was a fan of Faith and More. Um, all right. Because of, um, I think it was, uh, I used to be I, like my main instrument used to be drums. Like that's all it was. And okay. so, I was a big fan of like subscribing to the Tama drums catalogs and I'd get ones with like Dave Lombardo. And it was like, cool. He plays for Fantomas. <laughs> and yeah. so I was like, cool, I'm going to look up this band Fantomas. And then I'm like, wow, cool. This Buzz Osborne's kind of a dickhead, but whatever. <laughs> uh, um, which is really funny. Cause I love Melvin's. Um, like then he's got like one of my favorite bands. But, but and I think Tom, he Tomahawk. An, he's an admitted dickhead though. Isn't Buzz Jordan like an admitted dickhead? Like he just, yeah, I think he said it, but it's, it's just so funny. Cause like, I've heard him tell stories where he's like in this, I think he's in this little bar and it's like right before he's playing a song and he's telling this story about Dave Grohl being an asshole. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm like, I'm like, it's really funny. I was like, you're just mad because when Kurt or when Kurt stepped in to do Houdini with you guys, like Nirvana didn't take you guys anywhere. Like you guys thought they were going yeah. to. So now you're pissed off that, that this guy's doing way more than you. He's out playing stadiums and you're bitching to 10 people in a bar. Like, that's cool, man. Um, but like, like, um, then I found out from Fantomas, I was like, okay, this is crazy. I was like, okay, cool. Tomahawk. Okay, cool. What's Mr. Bungle. And then, you know, I played like Travolta for Mr. Bungle and was like, okay, cool. I'm like 12. And what is this? And, <laughs> That's um, the right response at that age for what you're listening to. Yeah. I was like 12 years old and I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And just instantly was like, this is crazy. And then I was like, okay, cool. Faith no more. I've heard Epic on the radio. And um, and then I went back and like listened to all their other catalogs. Well, yeah, actually, and- what is it? Yeah. <laughs> what up, Bob? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah but I, but that. Even that is an example, though, right? When you listen to The Real Thing, right? And then you go to Angel Dust and then go oh. to King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime, right? Like they literally completely reinvented themselves. Every album, they just got better. Well, a lot of people call that to start a new metal. And I got to say, even on really? a lot of people say that I don't agree with it, but you know, they give it the really proto see, new metal. I don't see it. Like, I don't, at, see, no, I don't see it either. Start. I don't know either to watch. Then they but. did album of the year. And I got to say, there's a lot of skippers on there for me, but that year last cup of sorrow, dude, that song's. I got to go back and listen to all these yeah, records. I haven't listened to this stuff in a long time. Yeah, but long yeah, time. Angel Dust, dude. Oh my God. There's that. We didn't do it. We didn't do it for zone zero, but. I'll I am I'll have to send this to you guys later. But me, um, Knox from Zone Zero, and then Kevin, who used to play drums for us, we all did a cover of um, "Son of a Bitch." What's that song? <laughs> Midlife Crisis. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so, like, it was funny because every time my friends don't know ever like how to properly say like, "Oh, you did good on this," they'll just say, "Oh, fuck you! Why are you so good at this?" And it's, oh, it's, okay. it's hilarious every time. Cause I did every time I do vocals now I do them at our practice space. And so our, our drummer was like, cool. I have, I have this, you know, uh, faith no more cover. I'm sitting on like, why don't you just, when do you want to do vocals on it? And I was like, me getting to sing Mike Patton, let's do it. Let's see how weird I can possibly get. And so I like went on YouTube and found like the isolated midlife crisis vocals and was like studying his shit. And then I, uh, 
I, I went to record and then I got all the vocals done for it and, and all edited and everything, sent it over to him. And then I get a text later. He, I was like, Hey man, just taught you the vocals. And he's like, cool. I'll drop them in and start the mix soon and get, get a version over to you guys. And like 10 minutes later, he's like, what? Fuck you. And I was like, what, what? And he was like, you're so fucking good at this. Why? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I was like, I, I have too much shit going on. Like I have too many musical projects. And I was telling a friend about this today. I was like, uh, I have this weird habit where like, I can't like a genre of music and then not go, I think I could start a band like this and then just <laughs> do it. And then I'm like, Oh shit. Now I got to do another band like this. And yeah. I had like my friends the other day, they're like, how many bands are you even in? And I was like, you know what? I don't know. So I like, typed it out in my notes app and I was like, Oh shit. Well, how, how many is it? Um, It's like, I got to count them. I play, I play guitar in a band. I play drums in a band. I sing in zone zero. I play drums in another band that sounds like Oasis. Um, oh, let's see. <laughs> I'm singing in this new thing. Um, me and a buddy started. Um, it sounds like Depeche Mode. Oh, well, it's really I'm cool. very excited. You love that over here. I will have to send you guys that as well. Um, it's it's my. I think it's one of my favorite things outside of Zone Zero that I've done. Like I've been wanting to do it for a long time. It's just real like '80s dark wave stuff, and it's like super cool. Um, and that was like by accident. Like I started just like fucking around the last year and I was like, okay, cool. Um, like this will be something eventually, I guess. And did like half of the vocals for it. And then I, I accidentally clicked on it a couple weeks ago. Um, just trying to go through some files. And I was like, this is cool. I should probably finish this. Showed it to a buddy of mine. Um, then he was like, okay, cool. I, I want to play guitar for this. And then, so now we're doing some, some shit. And uh, funny enough, we're actually doing a video for a song with the singer from Bather. Um, oh, okay. Josh. Yeah. Josh is a, is a real good friend of ours and he's insanely good. And so, uh, but I think it's like five or six, not counting. Like I have like solo shit that I do. Like I, I do like scoring work, like people who need shit done. I'm, I'm a big fan of like movie scores. And so um, I started out doing that with a buddy of mine who was doing a short film for college that never got done, but I have like all the music done for it. And so, cause I really wanted to be Trent Reznor. I really want to like be in this cool band, but then like have people like hire me for film scoring stuff. And I still really want to do it. So I think it's like six or seven that I like actively pursue. God damn, man. So, it's, it's a lot, but like, it's, it's fun. Like, it's just like, cause I can just, set one down and then like if, if i'm having trouble writing with it i can just set it down for a sec and then go all right cool what else can i do and then like okay cool i'm inspired to do this instead let's work on this there was a there was an interview that al jurgensen did where he talked about that and he said you know one of the benefits of having so many different projects that all while they're in the same you know universe they're all different is exactly what you just said you know, we can work on something yeah. listen to it and go he said, what was the example? That's not a ministry song, but that definitely is something that would fit more with law. You can pull. Yeah, yeah, he would just like yeah. put it to oh, the side yeah. and, then come, and then do something else and say, okay, well, that definitely was a revolting cock song. So, yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah. You, you yeah. just end up I with a that. bag of material and yeah, then it's like, exactly. okay, now I can put this wherever I, I need to put it. Yeah. Like right. I did that like a couple weeks ago. I started working on a song and I was like, this sounds a little too much like orgy. I was like, this could be <laughs> like, I could, I could dumb this down a little bit and rework yeah. it into like the Depeche Mode stuff. Yep. And, and stuff like that are like, I'll, I'll start like, working on like, for, like I'll, 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 I'll try to work on like production, like layering and stuff ahead of time before I like work on the full like riff stuff for zone zero sometimes. And I'm like, okay, cool. I want to create a mood that way. It's inspired. Like I'm inspired like a, in, a short intro or something. That's like a drum loop or uh, something like that. And I'm like, that'll inspire me to like write a riff around that. And then like build the song. And like, I started doing the, like the little intro beat thing to it, which is like fucking around with like drum breaks and stuff. And then I just wrote like an electronic like song on accident. And I was like, Oh shit, this is like three and a half minutes. Oops. And I was like, that, that I can't really write new metal riffs around this. I was, and then I thought, well, I really could, but I don't want to. And so <laughs> I just kind of stuck it in the folder of just like, I just have this folder <laughs> on my desktop. Like I have folders that are like different project stuff that I have one. It just says bullshit. And it's just like stuff. I'm like, this doesn't really fit anywhere, but I'll, I'll eventually. Do yeah. You always like got to give that folder like a, like a crappy name, like, oh, just, yeah. like the shit folder, <laughs> or like just some like lazy ass, like vulgar name. Oh yeah. Time. I have, I have like a, I have a billion of those. It's just like, I have one, uh, if I'm, if I'm like trying to organize stuff real quick and I just got to throw in folders, I'm just like, I'll, I'll make a new yeah. one. Just be like all caps, just like stupid bullshit. Yep, and then yep. throw all that in that one. 
Guilty. And <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm a bunch of different stuff. The, I mean, even the, the Depeche Mode sound, right, is experiencing a bit of revival with a lot of that, you know, the, like like Dark Horse Synth Wave stuff. I mean, yeah. you think of like Soft Kill or you think of like Trevor Something. Yeah. Like a lot of good sound stuff. is starting to come back and there's there, Drab Majesty, right? Great example. I was, there's yeah, I was yeah, just listening that. to him today. I was just listening to uh, that uh, the album Modern Mirror was like my top album of two, like 2019. And uh, like that was <clears> one of my favorites. I think that Drab Majesty is doing it great. Uh, there's this other band I've been listening to called Body of Light. Um, also, just crazy stuff. And yeah, uh, that that's actually really good. What was the one? I thought he was going to say the body, and I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was, I was, looking, I was waiting for your face. The body album, the newest one is body, great, are. but it's fucking terrifying. Did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that last Death of Lovers record? Yeah, yeah, it's fucking incredible. Oh man, that stuff's crazy. I yeah. think that's crazy because, like, is, isn't it most of the dudes from nothing? Yeah. That's where I thought. Yeah, because that. Um, and I yeah, think that, that, one that of was the, crazy. That was great stuff. The girl from where was she in? Where I think I, I believe so. Yeah, I yeah. Think so. so yeah, they they knit that record. Like, if you had told me, it's one of those records. Like, yo, if you told me this came out in like 1987 and I didn't know, you would like, believe. I'd, I'd believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I went to the uh, I went to the uh, merch store of them. They have like a cold cut store, and uh, they have a shirt that's like. Oh, what was that movie that David Byrne from the Talking Heads put out? It was like True. Is it True Stories or something like that? True something. Jay would know um, that. Jay, one. This is more Jay. Oh, I can picture the cover. I just don't remember the title. We we all look at the old guy. Like yeah. the, talk, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the Talking Heads are great though. But it's it's like the it's like in big font. It says True Stories, and like the top is like a red bar with the white thing in it, and like the bottom is is like the the white with the black logo on it. It says True Stories. Well, they have a shirt in their store that says Death of Lovers, like that style. And I'm like, as soon as I saw that, before even I was like, because I think they posted pre orders or something for it before I even heard of that band. And I clicked on the link to the pre orders before I listened to the song, and I saw they had like ripped that design for a shirt. And I was like, I think I have an idea how this is going to sound. And then I listened to the first song, and I was like, Yep, this is exactly how I thought it was going to sound, and it's insanely good. And so, but um, yeah, bands like that I think are are really cool. And it's what's really funny is I think about it now when when bands put stuff out and the people are like, oh, this sounds like it's an 80s band or like this this is like an 80s new wave band. And I think, you know, they weren't calling this 80s new wave back in the 80s. And it's so funny, like that that's just a yep. band back then. Well, we, and so Jordan, we've had that same conversation about new metal, right? Where it wasn't new yeah. metal back in the, the late 90s, early aughts. It was it was just it was like what, whatever it was where they call it, it groove like metal, yeah, or it, was, metal it was just rap like core. it was just rap like core yeah hard rap alternative <laughs> jordan we're still making those t-shirts yeah i have a list of quotes that are going on t-shirts and you got the Fuck. first one which is it's not new metal it's hard alternative <laughs> or, 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 I, I or hard turn so like i yeah, saw yeah, yeah. so many hard stupid comments in that group that was just like oh somebody listed this band they're like Oh, that's not a new metal band, bro. That's like this kind of band. And then I'm like, but what about this band? They sound like this band. They're like, oh, that's not that's not new metal either. That's this. And I'm like, who fucking gives a shit? Right. We're all losers. So who cares? <laughs> right. like, yeah. Who's nerd? Who's nerd? Who's nerd? Who's nerd? Here's the thing. Don't fucking call Rage Against the Machine a new metal band. They're fucking not new metal. I don't want to hear <laughs> Do it. Do not call them a new metal. No, I, I don't want to hear it. Don't call Fear Factory a new uh, metal band. Uh, I'll smack you for I that. I always threw. Okay. I okay, always okay, threw. Okay, wait a minute. I, and I actually got called out by the the one mod. On I know. He he commented today. They're he's waiting for my response. Band, yeah, but they're Ob- adjacent. And Digimortal or is I you know get it. They're equivalent adjacent. to like Slayer and Diabolus and Musica, right? Like everybody again. That was the sound. So you dipped your toes into yeah, that. Yeah, but sound. these dudes are calling D Manufacture a new metal record. No, that's Ray, fucking, that that's makes me want to commit murder. <laughs> rage, rage against the machine. I put them more in like that aggro, cat, like that Jesus Lizard Stanford Prison Experiment. Yeah, that's a good fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. like amphetamine reptile, like right, that early weird, helmet hard stuff. Yeah, early Dude, helmet damn, stuff. That's where I. Put Damn rep stuff is so sick. Like yeah. I was, I saw that stuff on the back of helmet Melvin's, for so long like, and like went and listened to more like am like am rep stuff and was like, Oh my God, these are all crazy. Um, another, I think there's, I always, I always like that era of like alternative metal bands, like helmet and Melvin's and like, um, like yeah, just weird stuff. Like Dude, yeah. Fudge tunnel. Oh, I mean, I, he, what, what Alex, Alex Newport, guy? he does yeah. production now. He like, he, he does big time stuff. Oh, who, who is it? Alex Newport from Fudge Shuttle. He's oh, Alex other, Newport. He, yeah, he did. He's um, the other half of Nail Bomb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nail Bomb. Yeah, Nail Bomb. 
Yeah, there is another the, thing. If I could start a band that sounded like Neil Bomb, I would like. Oh, I think shit, I would yeah. Well, there goes your ace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's like album seventeen and Jordan's yeah. list. That album's <laughs> fucking great. It is great. Right? It's so yo, good. Yo, before I forget though, you you put up this best of list at the end of the year, and I checked out some of the bands in there. There's this one yeah. band. It's this chick. She's like a she's like an Asian chick. What the fuck is that band called again? It's like a weird name. Is it like Biba Doobie or something? <laughs> Oh, um, shit. What's her name? I can't, I can never remember. Uh, let me look back on my list. Well, I'll tell yeah, you what, dude, um, that record is perfect fucking nineties alternative. I love it. Yeah, it's it. like, it's like Biba Doobie or something that, like that. Yeah, but, yo, yeah, her voice so is incredible. Good. There's yeah. I, I heard that for the first time in, um, well, I heard it on a Facebook ad, tried to remember what it was and just gave up. I was like, I'll never find this again. And then I was at planet fitness with our bass player and I heard the song over the speakers and I was like, what the fuck is this? It was nowhere near one of those TVs that's showing you what's playing. And I just like ran around the gym trying to find like a working television. <laughs> and I was just like, what I got to download this right now. And like, I, I admittedly didn't try to check. Like, I didn't check out a whole lot of like the new stuff last year and not cause I didn't want to. But like I was writing for like a bunch of different stuff and like I was like, oh man, I can't absorb any new music. And like I'm just whatever whatever's new that I hear in the car, like with my girlfriend or whatever, I'm like, I gotta remember this. Like I think and I won't argue with anyone any day, I think that Miley Cyrus record's incredible. I think she's awesome. Um I didn't used to. I was one of those I was I was one of those like nerdy kids who was like real big into metalcore who was like, Oh, pop music's the devil. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a virgin. And, uh, <laughs> and then I grew up and my balls dropped and I admitted that pop music was great. And so just a lot of like, there was, I, Yo, I, I still watch like on my list. Michael Jackson's thriller and shit. And like, yeah, it, it any, look, like any of the old pop stuff, like is, is, but perfect. you wouldn't have some of the stuff we listen to now without this, that stuff. Oh, absolutely. You know I mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. And, uh, in a lot of people, like, I don't, I don't listen to my, Miley Cyrus, but her voice is very distinct, and I love her singing voice. Yeah, she, she I mean, she killed that cover. What was that cover she did? Gritty. Yeah, she's um, she's cool, man. She did a uh, the zombie um, cover was fucking incredible. She, oh, incredible! And then she did like uh, Edge of Seventeen. She did like Heart of Glass. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, like yeah. But I think I think when she did the Heart of Glass cover, everyone was like, okay, cool. So she can do she can do rock stuff. Yeah, and see, I think it's really funny. I would rather, and I hate, I hate saying this, but like, I would rather have had her be like, yeah, I'm going to do a rock record and do that than, <laughs> than Corey Taylor. Um, oh God. Yeah, it's oh, awful. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing yeah. is, I like, I liked it, but I'm just like, you know what? You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it wasn't bad, but I'm just like, man, like, yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I I actually like the record, but I can understand why people don't. Yeah, yeah. And it's just because everyone's expecting like like my friend uh, AJ, who's the singer of that band Purity. If you guys haven't listened to them, no, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, hold on a second. Tell tell we got to get him on because that new single that it's Jay sent me is yeah, J-Lo. Yeah, it's so good. J Lo, um, little little FYI, uh, I did a remix of that song for them. Oh, okay, uh, and then. Nice. Uh, as of today, he, he hit me up. I'll be doing another song for them off that EP. Um, he wanted it. They're doing a... It's funny, I'm kind of still in the... Kind of still he joins the like the Rolodex of the stars he, for us. He's know, a, he should just be a media. He just should just run a media conglomerate. Uh, it's this fucking like, guy, man. <laughs> I, I'm like a TMZ guy for, for fucking... Like, I'm like, word on the street is... <laughs> and, uh, before I forget, right? Before I forget, because I, I got to get this out, because I was talking about this to Tim. Um, while we're talking about albums of the year and yeah. lists, I want to give a public apology um, to Mean Pete and Ether. We completely oh. forgot that came out last year when yeah. we did the best of list. And that is one of his, the best albums it he's is. done. And I love everything he does, but that album is so dark and it brooding. Is. And I completely whiffed on it. Well, he went through a lot last year. Yeah, but I, I completely whiffed on it until I went back and looked at the shit that I missed in, in that episode. And I went, oh my God, I forgot Ethan. Because it came out so early. Yeah. 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 But that was a great album. Jordan, if you haven't listened to that one, it's great. It's kind of, I don't know, Tim, how would you describe it? It's like, it's like black metal, but there's some metalcore parts to it, but it's, it's like neurosis. Yeah, Doesn't yeah. it have like a little bit of that cult leader-ish? Like, it's like yeah, neurosis it's like, yes. meets like a, 
like a doom metal like like a, yeah it, doom, yeah it, it's hard to explain um what is this called again it's called ether ether coven ether coven yeah it's coven, the, yeah. so it's like it's droney it, pete was in remembering never okay yeah 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 so cool. yeah yeah you just to, I'm so you know song. like the attitude of the music like, yeah 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 like, like like yeah pete like the, and she looks so good in red is one of my favorite records of all time i mean yes yeah. yeah that's a fucking brilliant record shit what is even though mean? when he came on he just hated it and i was so oh, i was so upset him, i was like well, oh shit because appara- apparently the recording was supposed to be like it was supposed to be like the notes were supposed to be more spaced out yeah yeah, it, yeah it was supposed to be more um like well, slow and well, he said the vocals were done on like a pinch. Like he just, I would almost like and... to like to hear what oh, here, what his original vision of it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah here yeah, you yeah. go, Jordan. The album is everything is temporary except suffering. Yeah, good. I'm gonna add this to my library. Um, this is sick. And speaking of stuff that Tim found for me that I completely missed last year, that Loathe album. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, I let shit. it in yeah. and it took good everything. Shit. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, dude. Like, that mean, album is so amazing. That. Like pull the car over. Yeah, yeah, it I was, was so amazing. late to that record. I, yeah. I was mad that I took so long to check that record out because um, our old drummer, Kevin, and our guitar player, Johnny, both, like, rave about that band. They're like, this band is so sick. Like, please listen to this band. And it was so funny. Every time our, our drummer listened to, like, this stuff so much, every time he'd go over there to, like, demo stuff out, as soon as he pulled up YouTube, it would just open to that video, like, the video, <laughs> the two-way mirror video. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm like, you know what? This is so cool. Like, I got to check the rest of this record out. And, like, I think it was the song, like, I think it's like Faces in the Dark or something like that. Um, like, super heavy. And it was just, it's almost, I don't know how to describe it. It's like if they took, like, every aspect of Meshuga and just said, here, write a Death Tones record. <laughs> and then I, they were just like, that's a oh, good one. okay. No, that's a good one. Yeah. I described then, Jordan to a buddy as, imagine if Ken Andrews from Failure discovered genty metalcore and oh fell in god. love with it yeah. like that's what it sounds like right? <laughs> that's so perfect oh my god it, it, it it's is like, a perfect it's like fantastic planet with an hm2 over top <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go holy <laughs> shit oh, that's so good um that's another band on the list of like the like the '90s alternative bands I love. This is Failure. Oh, I think what is this? That band's perfect. I think Fantastic Planet's good. I think like I think it's Frogs or Frog or no, what's the record called? Magnified. Um, yep, Magnified. That's the one. I was the Frogs. I, the- I am not afraid to admit when they did that reunion tour, they played the TLA, and I was there, and it must have been really dusty because they came out to another space song and my tears in my eyes, right? Cause they were one of those bands that I discovered and then they broke up and that was it. Yeah. And, and Jordan, I'm sure you'll agree. Fantastic planet is a perfect album. There is not one skippable track from the literally start to can't the end. put it on and just like, it's like skip through a song. I have to play it back. Yep. Like yep. the back. It's too, it's too good. I'm the same way with that, with um, Betty from helmet. Oh uh, yeah. Um, yep. That's that's like a I start it and as soon as I hear the the pinch on with the guitar on on Wilma's Rainbow I'm like all right cool buckle the fuck up kids let's go <laughs> dude we at me uh, I th- I think Jay was at this show as well before yeah, we knew him Tower, but the World Cafe World yeah, Cafe dude, that yeah. place is awesome me and Adam hey, and well, me Adam and Jay went and they played the two sets in a row that shit was incredible yep yep that oh, was the did, Betty like, tour uh, right. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Did the whole, they didn't like the hits and they did Betty. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder That's if they'll come through and do like Aftertaste or whatever. We'll yeah, go see, I was kind of I was kind of bummed about that though because they played Betty and then they played like, you know, in the meantime, they played yeah. a lot of stuff. They didn't play um what was it exactly what you wanted? Is that the song? Damn. Which is off of which is the last Aftertaste. album they did the first the first time they were together before they broke up. Yeah. Oh uh what what the fuck is that? Uh, yeah, the one I just I just said. What but was I mean, yeah, Aftertaste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They'll probably tour for that. You want to talk about a sound that you can if I just if you know there's certain sounds that if you say the words, you that's hear your when head. they added Chris oh, yeah. Chris and, Trainer from Orange Nine Millimeter. Yeah, yep. When I when oh, I say to you and I can say Jordan's gonna hear it in his head the fucking snare drum on Betty. Oh, yes. Oh, the it's just snap, oh, oh, that, yeah. that snap is just perfect. Yeah, yeah Orange 9mm, another great band. Yeah, when they right? played uh, the John Stewart show and they played Tick on MTV. Yeah. Oh, my dude, God. That's the heaviest so, song in the world. <laughs> oh, my God. Like I, like, I yell the lyrics at the TV and that shit. I don't know. Out. Dude, that's the same thing. I'll, I'll, I'll hear the and I'm like, oh, fuck And then, the, and and then, then it dude, just drops it. And I'm like, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get so excited about that. Yeah, dude. Um, there's a, um, so I don't know thick. if you guys have ever heard this band from Texas called Narrowhead. Oh, yeah. Um, 12th House yeah, Rock. They, I've never heard them. 
they did um their they're new they have a record out called i think it's called 12th house rock yeah 12th but house rock yeah super I mean, good and it's, it's fucking like incredible did you mix. play that for me yeah yeah we played it okay yeah, all it's, right. like, it's like a solid mix like it's just like a, a cool like 90s like alternative metal record and then like they have one song on there uh i can't remember what it's called i think it's called like hard to swallow but and it's funny because like now that somebody commented, they're like, "Oh shit, this sounds like a helmet song." It really is. Like it sounds like he he does like the Paige Hamilton vocals perfectly, and it's solid. And so I went and watched one of their like live stream things they just did, and at the end of their set, they cover Tick, and I was oh, like, shit. "Holy shit!" I was like, "This is gonna either be really good or I'm gonna like turn this off." And then they kicked into it, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is incredible!" And so, like, I've yet to find a good band that can really replicate like what Helmet was doing, because I think a lot of bands try to like, like they try too hard, and they they and that's that's the case with a lot of bands that try to mimic certain sounds with other bands they're doing, like almost like like imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Like, yeah, they 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 don't they they are they're really trying to pay homage, but then they like overdo it a bunch. Or like, I think there's a lot of metalcore bands lately that say like. Oh yeah, we're bigly like we're we're largely influenced by like Lincoln Park and stuff like that. And then I hear like an eight string breakdown in their songs. And I'm like, where the fuck is the Lincoln Park in this? <laughs> and it's just crazy. I'm like, oh, oh, that's right. You you play like a, a like a faster like a faster drum part and instead of slow here. Is that the new metal thing you were talking about? Because I hear nothing. Yeah, Dude, well, yeah. a lot of people are claiming that nowadays, and it's just it's just disembodied breakdowns over yeah. fast chord progressions. You know yeah, I mean? and, and don't get me wrong, right? If you want to rip off fucking nineties metal core and you yeah. do it well, God, you know, more good oh, on yeah. you, more power to you, but more snapcase bands, please. Yeah. More snapcase snare, right? More we snap yeah. fucking snare. snare. I don't necessarily need more snapcase though. Really? Oh yeah. man, yeah. I mean, that, that, that is crazy. Oh, lift, dude, lift is good though. I like yeah. lift. Well, lift, lift is amazing. Yeah, I like lift. Lift a lot. is amazing. That's dude, really good the, shit. Give me the steps. Give me the steps EP all goddamn day. Oh yeah, that's my and favorite release of uh, See, I'm a big fan of progression. So am I. I no, so I, I, like, I like snapcase, but I don't need to hear them anymore. I just love steps. Okay, but let's talk about another thing. I have never heard another band come close to doing dead guy. And well, well, well like, let, let, Jordan, listen. You, you need to you need to go back Fox. and look at all the episodes we've done because all these bands that you like, we've interviewed. Oh, Tim, that Tim. Well, kiss was a goodbye, botch playing. Yeah. We had we just had Tim Singer on. Oh, shit. And, I mean, and, and no, Tim Anderson made, uh, kind of made him embarrassed when he asked the question I had about like, yo, what font did you use for the dead? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because it's a, it's an ama- like it's perfect, and he's yeah. like, oh, well, it's Matrix Ariel, but yeah, have your buddy call me. Yeah. But uh, you know, you're speaking of masks. I actually have the mask that I bought from what is it? Um, Holy Ro- Holy Mountain. Oh yeah, it's Holy Mountain. Guy oh oh yeah, it says die with your mask on. Yeah, I wore okay. it when I flew down to visit my dad. I come out of the airport. He goes. That's a little too on the nose. Yeah. Isn't it? I thought about that same thing like the first time, like when this whole thing started happening. I'm like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna listen to a lot more music, and I was like listening to more and more records and stuff. And then I got to a fixation on a coworker, and I got to that song, and I was like, oh shit, like that's a little. <laughs> It's a little specific, don't you think? And it's really funny because that whole record's about like, oh, I'll tell your boss to go fuck himself. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you, you want to talk about it, rap, right? That's, all, that's a band that was, you know, Jordan, you said the band still comes all close to that. They're very much in that amphetamine reptile, yeah. like, like Jesus lizard noise. Yeah, that kind of funky, aspect, like, definitely. yeah, like, and like it's just it's so like I I, I pictured I, I think I tweeted about this on Twitter. I was like, every time I listen to Fixation on a Coworker, I picture like one type of person in my head, and it's some guy in like those Dickies Eisenhower jackets, and he's got like <laughs> slick back hair, and he's wearing the thick black glasses, and he's a part of a union. Like uh, uh, what's I got the other you band? That's like the guy. Season the risk or or uh... well, well, no escape just put out an EP. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, if you're in the that, they just did. And uh, also, some DC band. I'm thinking. Of. I'm gonna say this now, but you're gonna get more dead guy shit soon. Oh yeah, he talked about that. Yeah, yeah. you're you're getting more dead guy stuff. Soon. Can't wait, dude. That that Big is dead. every year, Jordan. We talk about you know who is our who is our wannabe surprise headliner for this is hardcore. And every year, I'm like, that guy. Yeah, oh, I, I, that guy. Dude, I would kill for that. Like, I think the fe- it's gonna happen. I think the fests were gonna be crazy last summer. Yeah, and now we're just you know waiting. Yeah, They're, now, now they yeah. got now everyone has time to get ready though. There's a know? dead guy documentary coming out soon yep. too. Yep, I I need that. I need that real fast. They just pitched. They just pitched me an interview for that, so that That's might be awesome. happening oh. soon. So, 
But dude, like if you go back in in the episodes, we we've had two people from Disembodied, Martyr AD. I mean, there's a lot of shit you can what, who, get into. What, man. What's his screen name? White White. Belt buckle douchebag. Oh, bullshit, bu- bullshit belt buckle. Yeah. yeah, the guitarist from Disembodied. Oh, yeah. Water AD, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, it's, it's good stuff on there. Yo, listen before we before we talk about other stuff all night. I want to get into the band a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so be, because I don't want to run out of time and we didn't talk about Zone Zero at all. So right. I just want to get in this real quick. Like when you guys put out Strict Nine Dream, like that was on that record. Did you do all of the music on there? On that one, yeah, everything okay. everything was me. I had a bunch of that stuff written. I didn't intend to put out an EP. It was supposed to just be like a few songs here and there. And then it was really it was really funny though, because like uh, I put out the two songs. It was like All in Your Head and then Be Like Me as like a as a two song thing. And then we released another two song thing that had Losing My Grip and Glass on it. So that was four songs. And then I was like, okay, cool. I have these two other songs. Like, let me stick those with these other four and just do a six song EP. And then I realized when bands announce like pre-orders for a record, wherever they'll put out another new song. And so we put out, um, in my veins. And then it was really funny. Cause I was like, you know, it's really funny. People are going to pre-order this and they'll have five of the six songs already. And then, so when this EP comes out, they're just getting the last song on the EP. I'm like, you have all of this. Cause everyone's like, can't wait for the EP to drop. I'm like, just listen to it. Like, it's all right there. I was like, you're missing one little ballad type song. That's that's all. Um, but that whole that whole EP was me. Um, we did it. I think we we put it out January 24th last year, and then we played our first show with that lineup the next night. And it was it was like a, it was so crazy. Like I had, I've never been a frontman before. Like before that, I had played drums in a band and sang. Like did the clean. I did the under oath style thing where like. I was the clean singer to like their scream vocalist and yeah. stuff. And so, um, and it was really funny because when bands wanted like a clean vocalist, like in the band, but like they didn't want, like, but no one in their band who played guitar or whatever could, could, could do it. They're like, Oh, you play drums and you sing like, cool. You're in this band now. And so I was just be doing that. Um, and so I was like, well, you know, I'll be a little nervous. Cause like, I can't back away from the microphone and just play drums. I can just, all I have to do is stand there with this microphone. I got to figure out some shit to do. And I'm I'm nine foot twelve, eight hundred pounds, and so I'm <laughs> I'm up there on stage. I'm my lanky ass is up there on stage, just like walking around. Like I'm doing like I try not to do like the pissed off hardcore guy thing and just like walk around with my head down the stamp entire time. Around, dude, yeah. And like stamp around. I did do like I jumped around a lot and everything. Like I was I was like the epitome of that Soulfly song, "Jump the Fuck Up." Like that was <laughs> that was me when I couldn't think of anything else to do. I was like, I'm gonna jump. So that's all I did. And my friend, Jeremy, luckily I was like, Hey man, I was like, I'm an idiot. And I didn't plan on my stage presence. So like, I'm going to jump a lot tonight. I was like, if you could get me like one, not stupid looking shot of me jumping, that'd be awesome. And he was like, cool. I'll, I'll see what I can do. And then he came to me after the show and he showed me his camera and he was like, is this what you're looking for? And it was like, perfect, this perfect jump in the air. And like, I texted it to my mom and I was like, yeah, this, you know, first, you know, new bands first show and everything. And this picture came out great. And like, she's worked for Walmart for like, almost 20 years now and so it was like right near my birthday she was like cool i got you this cool christmas present or this cool birthday present and then she shows up and she got like a big canvas made of me jumping in the air like that out of that picture and i was just like damn this is the first time y'all ever been proud of me for doing music this is insane yeah it is 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 pretty cool Yeah. yeah Like, it was just crazy. Like, that sounds kind of harsh. Like, it just sounds like my parents were like, fuck, give up. Like, but they <laughs> were never like screaming. that. But, like, my, the yeah, like why do they got to scream all the time? And I'm just like, because they're pissed off like me, mom. God damn. <laughs> and uh, I was that teenager. Like, when I first discovered Slipknot, game over. Like, that's, I was, I was instantly, like, the next day, I just, like, showed up at school. I had, like, my hair all, like, brushed to the side. I, like my buddy David gave me like these two like monster wristbands and stuff. And I was like, I am hot shit. You cannot fuck with me right now. Yeah. But try, try being, try being 15 and seeing them start out with fucking sick. And you're just like, Oh my God, Mm -hmm. what what is going on right now? I watched these like old live videos. Like there's, there's one, there's one, uh, I think it's called like not concerts a hundred or something like that on YouTube, but he uploads like a, just all these old Slipknot sets. And I was like, I went through and like, cause this is how bored I am on every single day. I like went through and found all the ones like in order and put them in a playlist. I'm like, I'm just going to watch these and like watch their progression and just watching all these ones from 1999. I'm like, 
Jesus fucking Christ. This band is like, this band is blowing up in real time, like in these scenarios. And it's, it's, it's crazy. That band is my favorite band of all time. Mm. Like that record is my favorite. Okay. Like okay. I was so happy when, when you guys did the, the, the big run through of, of the first, the self title record. And, well, uh, well, uh, well, you mean you can come on for Iowa if you want. Oh, let's go. I'll talk about that. All right, cool. Too. There we go. Um, it was, and you know, remembering like they went, they were a band who you, you, there's on YouTube is definitely one of their early shows where they were on the second stage of Ozfest, right? Where you could see that there was some magic there. But I mean, I just remember seeing them open for fucking Machine Head and Coal Chamber, and they blew oh. everybody else off the stage. And then they, then the next. The next tour, they were headlining, and it was at the Bird Show. Adam, you ever go to the Bird Show in Jersey? I've been there once or twice. And they just, Jordan, they nuked this place. Like, it literally <laughs> Describe like, that club real quick. Is um, that the one where, like, you can go in, there's, like, the ticket booth, and you go up a set of stairs? Yes, there was, there was a, a level, then three steps, then another level, then three steps. I the saw pit, that, uh, what was it? Cape Reed, Hunter Demon, Shatter Realm, Red Line. Oh my it, God. Dude, oh it, my God. It was like How a, did you come out of that alive? Um, <laughs> well, I don't even think I could go up the one set of steps to see, but I could see through like the fence and I didn't want to go up there anyway with what was going on out there. Like, yeah, that's, that's a, you want to talk about a fucking like prison, in, right? nor, in North Jersey, like yeah. with those bands, like I was just like, Jesus Christ. Oh, but back to okay so birch hill yeah the birch hill and you know i saw slipknot open for for machine head and cold chamber and next thing you know they're headlining and it was biohazard was direct support so it's okay. not biohazard in the deadlights oh and, I, don't, uh, I don't remember this that man. and you know imagine imagine nine dudes on stage jumpsuits and mastered over in the birch hill which is not a big venue it is yeah and it's it not. was like nine billion degrees not in the just, main pit like where it's just like no, a little it was fucking it's a kill zone insane. yeah it was a kill zone sounds like a perfect yeah. show yeah it was, it was like one of those things where you're like in hindsight my you know the guy who i went with we've talked about it where we look back and we said that was the point where we realized that these guys are going to be bigger than anything else we're watching right now. And they probably don't even know. I can see that. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was nuts. It was totally nuts. So yeah, Jordan, let's talk about, um, you know, so, so um, you just put out the newest single is gray. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you premiered that through not fest, not world, right? That website was the yep. first one to run with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, that was, that was crazy. Um, we were supposed to drop it on the fifth, and um, we we really wanted to do it through Not Fest, and we hadn't heard back by like the third, and so finally it was like the fourth, and our manager was like, "Yeah, um, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it next Friday." And we're like, "Okay, that's cool." And it was like the longest week of my life, like I'm just waiting <laughs> for that because like we hadn't put out like any actual new content since like June of last year when we put out Misdirected. Like the thing we put out after that was just the live versions of the stuff, and so. Um, I was just super anxious. I was like, it's been like eight months since we've done anything. I'm, I'm really, really anxious to see. And we did that video. We did two videos in one day. We did a video. We did a video for the cover. So that'll be, that'll be fun. It's super simple. Just super cool performance video. Um, is it a new metal band that you covered? It is not. Okay. So, okay. Um, but, uh, uh, which, which I think is really funny. I think it's funny when, when like newer new metal bands cover old new metal bands, I'm like, dude, I want to do something different. Like I have a list of covers like 10 miles long. And number one on my list is like uh, Firewoman from the, from the cold. <laughs> I just, I think if I think of a new metal band did that song, it would fucking smoke. And yeah. I, I just, like you could make it sound like power man, 5,000 and get away. Power with man, 5,000, yeah. man. Like, you, could, you could make it sound like off the, like a B side off like tonight, stars of revolt. And it'd be, it'd be banging. I just, these old bands are just like, like all these new bands are just like, Oh, we covered Lincoln park. I'm like, why? We no, you don't need that. Just the, go the, listen to Hyper What's Theory. that new vein band that with the uh, uh um, Fleshwater? Fleshwater. Oh, right. Fleshwater. It's, that band's cool. They covered it, Bjork. It, it's that, like it's like it. Vane meets the trailer trash Tracy's or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sick. Uh that band's incredible. Yeah. But I'm but yeah, we we, we uh we did like these two videos in like late December and uh which is really funny because uh, our manager was like, Yeah, we're just gonna like just, just take your time, keep writing. We'll we'll do something. We'll we'll I'm, I'm working on it and everything. We'll 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 get everything uh, up and rolling pretty soon. And then it was like, I think it was like first of November, something like that. I'm I'm tracking drums for like another band I I, I play in, and uh, he texts us and he's like, yeah, so we're getting ready to like 
uh, do some stuff for next year. He's like, I think we, I think we want to do some stuff with you guys around like January, February of next year. And we're like, Oh, okay, cool. Like, what do you want us to do? And he's like, yeah, I think I want to do two videos and have you guys go record. We're like, Jesus Christ, man, you want us to like pay for like these two videos and stuff. So we had like a hell of a time the next month and a half, just like scrounging up for, <laughs> for these videos and stuff. But like once the videos were happening, I was like super pumped on it. Just, uh, and we did it with some good friends of ours. Like I, Every I think everyone in that band had done a video or something adjacent with the guys we worked with. So it was already like a good relationship. And I didn't really give them a whole lot of like direction or notes. I was like, here's videos I really like. And here's the vibe. I was like, you know, we sound like these bands. I think the number one thing I was like, yeah, I was like the closest band I could really picture us sounding like is like um, Heide Callis and the Sarah Spine Shanks. I was like, that's about the closest I can give you to this song. And then they were like, okay, cool. So they sent us like this storyboard of like, okay, cool. Here's here's some screenshots of other videos that we're going to try to replicate. And one of them was Bodies by Drowning Pool. And I was like, I can see that. And so when we showed up and they had like all the set and everything done, which is super basic, um, then I saw like through his camera, like what we were going to be looking at and everything. And I was like, this is the most 2001 looking shit I've ever seen in my life. And I'm a fan of it. <laughs> and so we did these videos and um just sat on it until we we decided to we decided or our manager decided it was the time to drop it and then once it just neared the release date february 12th i was just like it just time kept stretching out more and i was like i'm so ready for this to just be out and um you know like i've listened to the song a million times i'm like i'm not even bored with this i think it's, i think i think we made a, a really solid song and then uh i think it all just i think it all paid off like the weight, um, you know, we were, we were always super impatient with content and everything. And our manager was like, you guys just got to wait. Like, it's going to suck, but you got to sit on it because it's going to pay off. And then we dropped the video in like a couple of days, you know, within a couple of days, just kept monitoring the numbers and stuff. You know, I always, I always measure it with like how many people I don't know who tell me they like my band. I'm so I'm stoked. I'm like, cool. I, I love it. My friends tell me it's, it's good. Like that's, that always, that always makes me feel good. I love it. Yeah. I love it. My friends tell me it's, it's good. And I know that they're not just telling me that I know they're not bullshitting, but like just random people add me on Facebook just to message me and go like, dude, your band's fucking sick. I love you. And everything like these, these guys are you that's your EP's crazy. I bought a shirt. I bought a CD and I'll go look. I'm like, Oh, Hey, dude, it's crazy. And, um, and so that was really cool. I started seeing like a bunch of like people I didn't know, like, you know, like the stuff on Facebook and everything. So it's been, it's been really, really fun just to have this out and like have this, you know, big content push and everything. I, I think, I think, uh, I, I, uh, I'm just, I'm ready to do more already. Like I'm, I know that some bands they'll put out their big thing and they'll, they'll be like, all right, cool. It's out. Now we can chill for a sec. I'm like, no, Let's keep going. Yeah. Like, uh, we're, we're already like, metal. Yeah. You can't yeah, chill in like, 2021. You no. have to be you'll relevant. Get for, you'll get forgotten. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And I'm, yeah. And I'm just like, we're just planning on, like, it's, it's funny because I had this, like, I had an album written and then Gray was like in that list of, of songs that was supposed to be on the record. And then now that we're like, okay, cool. Let's keep doing singles. Our manager's like, well, just keep writing for a record. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Now I got to just try to push the idea that I had for this whole record kind of out of my head and kind of realize that like, let's not actually think about this record stuff until we have a reason to do it. And so we're just like picking songs out of this pile of like, okay, cool. That could be a cool single. This could be a cool single. Let's do this. And so we're just trying to plan like way in advance. I'm like, what, what content can we do? And, and to keep, to keep pushing this. And I'm just, I'm really just, I'm couldn't be more excited. Like, it's just, it's finally starting to, you know, I look back at where it was when I first started doing this stuff and I was just like, yeah, I'm, I have a couple of buddies getting together playing playing music, and hopefully this will be cool. And now it's like, hey, I have an article on NotFest.com premiering my video, and this is this is crazy. Like, I know I'm, I'm not really sure how how in depth NotFest the site itself is connected really with Slipknot, like, but I know it's it's still it's still there. And so Slipknot being my favorite band since I was 11 years old, and then getting this video put on NotFest.com. It just kind of came full circle for me. And it just was such an like it was such an accomplished feeling. I know like this is the most bare minimum thing that a lot of bands do to like 
oh cool we have a video up, up here on not fest like if a band like lamb of god or gojira did their video or whatever through not fest it's like cool got our premiere up we're good but for me when it was like all right cool here's the link for notfest.com i was like texting our group chat i'm like okay cool this is awesome but in real life i'm like oh my god i was like <laughs> freaking out i'm like it's real and it's <laughs> it's happening and i'm like i was like on break at work like when we posted it, I was like, Hey, got a step. Cause I was like working from home. I was like, Hey, I got to step away from the chat real quick. I'll be right back. I'll go to the bathroom. It was like 10 AM. We're getting ready to drop. And I'm in the bathroom, just like texting the group chat. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go time. Let's drop the links and stuff. And I like 10 30, I like ran on my girlfriend's like our bedroom and I'm, she's still asleep. And I just wake her up. I'm like, it's real. It's not, not, not. <laughs> and I'm like, She's like, Oh, it's great. Cool. Leave me the fuck alone. And I'm, uh, I'm like, ah, and I'm just, <laughs> I was, it was so cool. It was just such a really cool feeling. And like my mom called me later that night. She was like, I showed it to people at work. I don't, I don't really listen to this stuff, but it's really cool. Like I have a lot of friends who dig it and everything. And I'm just, I'm so proud. And like, we went to dinner the other night. Um, cause me and my mom have the same birthday. So her birthday is today too. Oh, okay. And uh, so, um, so they usually go on some sort of trip. I don't get to ever see my parents like on our birthday. Now, you know, since I've moved out. And so, they were like, yeah, let's, let's get together on a weekend before we leave and we'll, we'll get food and everything. And so like, we got there and like my dad, who's like never said a single word, like not positively, like he's just kind of like, that's cool. You do music, but just remember, like, you got to do other shit anyway. Like you're going to have to go get a job and everything. Don't really rely on music right now. And that kind of like pushed me to do a little more and like really get it going. I'm like, I was the rebellious kid who was like, well, she says I can't do music for a living, but I'm going to prove him wrong. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. We're, adult, we're like, guaranteed a oh. record deal. The tapes are that good. Yeah. It's like right. you just want to stick <laughs> exactly. it in his face when yeah. it happens. Yeah. yeah. Which is well, probably really a good motivator. motivator. Yeah. And so, like, we got there and, like, we're just talking about it. And he just looks at me. And he's just like, I got to tell you. He's like, that's really cool. Like, I read the article and everything. He's like, you know, for, you know, your parents telling you you can't do this shit, like, all your life. He's like, you, you proved us wrong. And, it's really cool to like to, to see it, like you finally doing this and like it, it paying off for you. And he's like, I'm just really proud of you for that. And 26 year old me is just like, thanks dad. Like I'm when, like, almost when your dad. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, man, I grew up being like, Oh, fuck my parents. Oh, <laughs> like, no, oh, my mom's cool. But, uh, but I just, I grew up like the rebellious kid. And then having your parents be like, no, 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 we like this. This is cool. Keep going. I'm like, yeah, so that's now pretty you cool have to your, do the grindcore album. Your dad had. <laughs> yeah. Your dad oh, had. Yeah, to, your dad had to admit you were a real rocker, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, what I it is. I was. I was like, and it, it's really funny because like I'm the youngest kid in my family, and uh, um, I'm also the tallest person in our family. Like I, I look that over. I'm, I'm I'm six five, so I'm God, very damn. tall, and I look over everyone. Like, Shooting guard. And so it's really funny because like when I, I it was like right, it was right around the time we, we started really talking to our manager and everything full time. And um, I went home over the weekend. My parents live out in like middle of nowhere farm area and they just built, they built a brand new pool and everything. And so we're all just hanging out and I get home and I walk out back and I walk up to my dad and he always does this thing with me where he's like just a little bit shorter than me. And so he'll walk up to me and kind of like, like hold himself a little higher to try to like look like he's taller than me. And I was like, get the fuck down, little man. You're talking to a real rocker now. And was, <laughs> he was just like, Jesus fucking Christ. This and dude's it was, got a it big was head best. now. <laughs> oh, it was the best. I walk up and, and it was funny that because later that same day, I went and I got my hair cut into a mullet. And <laughs> it was perfect. I was oh, like, I was like you can't slow me down, motherfucker. I'm on one. <laughs> and this is in Ohio. This is in Ohio. It's great, so it's, dude. It's the most Ohio it's shit yeah, I could have possibly done. <laughs> Yo, at the end of the video for Gray, what what is the uh, JECP thing? Oh, that's the uh, it's the guys who did the video. Uh, oh, okay, okay. It's uh, Josh Emmerich. Um, I forget what the CP is. It's like something production or cinema productions or something like that. I can't, I can't remember the name of it. I just know that they, every time they sign everything for us, it's like J E C P. And so that's just their production tag and everything. But, uh, um, so, uh, but yeah, great, great guys to work with. We did two videos in like a 10 hour day all on the same set and everything. Yeah, that's so not bad at all. Uh, yeah, it wasn't terrible. Um, but we were just like, we were so amazed that we were such like, we were ahead of schedule with, with gray and, uh, um shout out to our friend walker who was the guy in the mask um uh our friend okay. walker 
he plays uh he plays guitar and sings this band called mouth movements not at all like us like they sound nothing like us they're a really good band though another top-notch band from columbus but uh, um he uh knows our guitar player rob and we we're like hey we need just we need like someone who can just put on this gas mask and thrash around and everything and he was like cool i'm your guy and so he showed up and the funniest moment of the, of the entire day, I just will never leave my head is uh, it's like the band and then him. And there's like our production crew. Um, so it's our guy, Ross, who's like directing the video and then Josh, who's filming it. And there's some other crew people. And there's this other kid, Carter, who um, he was kind of like just operating stuff for us. Like he would, you know, cue the music and stuff for the, for the takes. And so he's helping what, what was the mask in the video on Walker is like, uh, it's like a paper. It was a plastic bag, I think, where like he had he had a hole cut in the mouth and the eyes, so he could still breathe and see and all that stuff. And then they took those like sticky string light things that are like remote activated, and uh, they wrapped them like all around his head. And then they put the gas mask on, so like the glowing eyes you see is just like a string of lights, um, like wrapped around his head. But it was just really funny because we're all just laughing about something else in silence. And Walker's just in here, like, dead still in this chair while he's getting this shit wrapped around his face. And Carter just looks at me and goes, so how's your day going, man? And everyone just lost it because it was just <laughs> such a, like, he's sitting there with, like, I had painted his chest. Like, I just put some random paint on his chest and just yeah. came around. So he's sitting there, like, uncomfortable, getting his head, like, touched and everything. And just everyone's dead quiet in the news here. So how's your day going, man? And we just, oh, it was the... It was just such a funny. I, I I really hope we had a guy there like shooting behind the scenes stuff. I really really hope that he got that, and I really want to see that because it was just one of those like comedic timing, perfect. And so, uh, but yeah, um, that was such a fun video. Like I I had such a fun time doing that, and it was my first video in like four years. I think the last one didn't. The last one I did never even got put out. So this is like the first official music video I think I've ever done. Yeah, it, tur- it turned out good. So. So you're telling me when I talked to Mike from Bather, he was in Zone Zero at that time. He just yeah, couldn't I say think anything. It was around since around like I want to say like September. God damn. October. So and it's not that he really didn't want to like. I guess it's I don't know if he didn't really want to say anything. I guess but like if we had friends who like knew it or figured it out, like we weren't going to deny it or anything. Like, oh, he was okay, just, yeah. Cause he's in a bunch of other stuff. Like he's in like Bather. He's in this band called natural selection. He's yeah, in a bunch orthodox, of other, like, he's orthodox yeah. and stuff like that. And so, but yeah, he was instantly like, um, well, what happened with Kevin was like, we, um, he started talking about stuff like real seriously around like late August and everything. It was actually on Kevin's birthday. And he was like, um, like, uh, uh what was I going to say? we were all just like super hyped on everything. And then like the next month later, we wake up to the, to, in the group chat to this big long text. And he's done this like so many times as a joke that we thought he was joking. But when we like, I got to the bottom, it's like that meme where the one guy's on the computer and he's smiling. And then the next panel looks down and he's like frowning and he's like, Oh shit. That was us reading this big long text. Cause he was like, cause before I think it was like a couple joke ones where he was like, Hey guys, like I got to quit the band. He's like, um, because like he was in a band before called The Plot in You. Okay. Um, oh shit! He was he serious? Damn. Yeah. Okay, our, drummer, our drummer Kevin was in this band called Legion. They were like a deathcore band from Columbus. Um, and Plot in You, and so what, what, was we, he? What, what record for Plot in You was he on? Uh, I don't know if he ever played on one, but he toured with them through like it was like Could You Watch Your Children Burn? That oh, children okay, burn okay. He but, was touring with them because I saw um them with the Acacia strain headlining. Um, and the, it was like when Kane, that band Kane Hill was like unheard of. Oh and yeah. It, Great was, it was like, right when they were like, Hey, we're on rise records, like baby band. And so it was like them three playing a show. And this is the funniest story. And I really hope this is the first time anyone's telling this because I want him to hear this and angrily text me about it. Cause it's fucking hilarious. So <laughs> mid song through plot, there's one song, I forget what song it is, but it like changes tempo. It's something that got messed up with the backtracks. He couldn't hear it right. He got frustrated with the backtrack rig. He took his in-ears off. This is like three songs into it. He he takes his in-ears off, just goes, this is fucking bullshit, and slams the laptop and walks off stage. Oh, man. And so Landon from the plane, he goes, guess we're done. See you guys later. And then just <laughs> the band just goes off stage. And I just oh, such a funny story. I really hope I really hope no one's ever told this before because I really want to be the the one. And uh, go for it. 
I just, well, I'm just saying like, this is, then, then they walk off and strange as they're saying. And then like, um, I actually became friends with like Kane Hill that night. Like me and their singer, Eli still talk. Uh, great and, fucking uh, band. Oh, incredible. I think they're, they're solid. I think the, the songs, it's really funny. Cause like the two like full lengths they put out have been like pretty, like yeah, a little, Tim, you always really kinda, like, like yeah. some, some groove metal stuff here and there. And then there's like two last songs they put out. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, man. Yeah. That's sing Dude, that's really singing in the me. swamp song is fucking incredible. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. The way but it starts like, out. Oh God, I love it. That little clean part in the beginning is crazy. It's so good. I, they're, yeah, they're it, geniuses. it sounds but like so, they just recorded him playing an electric guitar without it plugged in. I think it was like that on like the, cause they, they're from like new Orleans. I think it was like just on the porch or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah I, keep, I keep telling Jay to check that band out. Fucking crawdads. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that was well, real good. Let, listen, we're running out of time, but I, yeah. I want to get a couple more things in before, before we let you go, because we're, we're going to have to get you on again, because I literally have yeah, like he's got 40 like a, questions here. And I went through like two of them. He's got like four, <laughs> he's got like four or five pages. I literally have like four pages of shit where I wanted to talk about, but that's completely fine. But I want to get these other things uh, out yeah, of here cool. real quick. And like in the next five minutes, Um, so you're, you're also in a rock, like slash indie band. You play drums, right? Right. Um, what is that band called? Um, there's a couple different ones that are like the rocks indie stuff. Um, the one I played drums in most recently is uh is called it's called Waltz for Venus, which that, is named after I think it's okay. Cowboy Bebop. Okay, I think that's what our singer named it after. But he's a huge fan of Weezer, and uh, so we like we're in a band. Um, it's called Ritual Eulogy. Yeah, and, I was just gonna um, say that that's a that's like a metalcore band, right? That's a great yeah, name. that's very like. Yeah. I I was trying to think of how to describe it. Um, I really couldn't think of like any solid like old school bands to compare it to. I guess, um, but uh, bands I guess like newer bands like Kublai Khan. I always tell like, I always tell people that I'm like oh, I feel like Kublai yeah Khan, probably like our yeah stuff. yeah definitely. Um, but so uh, our drummer abruptly like abruptly like left and was like, hey, I'm I'm gonna be a tattoo artist. Like, see you guys later. And so we were like, well, shit, what do we do now? And so I was gonna be I was gonna move to drums and instead of playing guitar um we were going to be you know bring our oh, we had a friend of ours play guitar for the band before we we're going to bring him back and then he was like yeah I'm, I'm a little busy right now like so we're like well let's just put that on hold and then we'll we'll do this fun little rock band and so it was just the three dudes from ritual eulogy just made another band oh, okay. and just, we just recorded that like i i recorded that whole thing just just quickly and then we're gonna do i think we're gonna do a little more later on like with an actual for, i think because i think we're actually gonna do it with knox from zone zero because he records bands in his basement oh, okay but uh it yeah was, i was just gonna say that. about him we should uh, you should tell him to come on i'll i'd love to talk to him too oh yeah I, I, I really every time there's like a chance to do a podcast i'm always telling him like you and me got to do it because we're like he's he's such a great guy to talk to and uh he doesn't talk as much as i do if i need to shut the fuck up no 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 <laughs> well, well listen well well after this well well tomorrow i'll hit you up and we'll we'll figure out that time for that too but i want to get into nice. this too um you all to tell everyone about the electronic project oh yeah um so <laughs> this is really funny but going back to uh what Jay was saying about the body. Um, I just put out another three song thing uh, under the name uh, Skin Drill, which is the name Skin Drill comes from, uh, there's an old band called Head of David, which is like pre-Godflesh stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dog, mm -hmm. Dog Day Sunrise. Yeah, yeah. like Dog Day Sunrise. And uh, so there's a song there called Skin Drill, and I was like, that's cool. That sounds like super crazy. And it's just like harsh power electronic stuff. It's really just like I made it and every time I like tell people to listen to it, I always tell them like, Hey, when you go to listen to this, I'm sorry. And they're like, what? I'm like, I'm sorry. You have to listen to this. I was like, I was like mega depressed and I didn't like actual music. So listen to these machines <laughs> just clanking around. Honey, yeah, I know what that's like when you just want to <laughs> listen to beats of, and shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And I have a bunch of friends who are like into that, like harsh noise shit. And like, same with me, like one of my like records of 2020 was a, a harsh noise record. And everyone's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, man, it's just so crazy. I was like, well, it's isn't so uniform like, kind of like that? Yeah, but no, it was uh, like, well, like the, the that sound though. That's a little like, is a yeah. little like uniform. That yeah. means great. Um, the uniform is like they're in that same orbit. They're taking that sound and kind yeah. of running for and like progressing it. Like, yeah, I mean, it, like, I mean, if you look at if you're gonna set your north star as the body, right? Um, <clears throat> stuff like full of hell, sightless pit, uniform. Yeah. Um, 
what's the other band? Uh, Ling- Lingua Ig- Ignata? Ignota? 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 Yeah, I think. Her shit, I can't that's even that's listen to crazy. that. Dude. Yeah, that's, I, I get really uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, like that it's, either. It's, it's you disturbing. can tell she is. It's she's, disturbing. Yeah, she's got some shit that she's working out on a microphone. Oh, yeah. It's, that's, it's really that's unsettling. Oh, the more, the more uncomfortable and like a harsh, like an electronic record is, the more I love it. I'm like, please <laughs> scare the fuck out of me. Mersbo, where it's like oh, your dude, ears are bleeding. Though, like, I'm like, I'm like, y'all ever listen to Pulse Demon all the way through? They're like, yeah. They're like, I've I've been in between radio stations before. I've, I've heard that for sure. <laughs> it's really funny because like... <laughs> every comment I see on a Mersbo video is, uh, it's in quotations that says, sorry, guys, I just can't seem to get this figured out. And that's, and that's so funny because that's, that's that's what i watched this guy on youtube and he's, he does these videos it's like five records to get you into and it's like a particular genre and this kid's like super smart and he's like i think he's like a british dude he's like super smart and he talks about like harsh noise records and he just he like if i listen to one and i'm like oh yeah it's fucking nuts man the machines go brr and it's crazy and then that's like my synopsis of a noise record and he's like all oh, these these sounds are so haunting and eloquent and everything i'm like damn dude like i'm gonna have you just write all my shit for me <laughs> because i can't talk i'm like yeah machines go bra and it's crazy and then he talks about it like in, in depth um but i have another i have a couple different like electronic things um the of course you one. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, got, we got to hook Jordan up with uh, Chris Bollinger Chris, yeah, from Machine Chris, Man yeah. Records. He's just like, um, I make music. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's basically, he does a label of all industrial stuff. He's in Varicella. Yeah. And there's oh, another cool. band that he does. Um, Tim and I did a deep dive with him on the ministry catalog, which, man, we went like three and a half hours. Oh, we were man, polluted. That's, yeah. By the yeah you, got, you guys could just start like a... We were crazy, polluted. yeah, crazy B oh, factory. Man. That's ministry is a great. I, I saw ministry a couple of years ago and they were flawless. Like Al Jorgensen walking out 60 years old could still whoop the shit out of me. <laughs> and it, it, it's so sick. Um, oh, deed like but, four times. What was that? Uh, like? What's no, that? Like, you can't kill him. I was like, him and Keith Richards need to donate blood or something. All right. What's was that like, label? Did you ever see the uh, fucking oh, before you said that, Adam Corona fucking runs oh, away from yeah. Jorgensen? Yeah. Dude, it's yeah. crazy. Like, I, yeah, it's not giving it. It's like, oh, I have to get to this guy. I'm over. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that COVID what, stops with Al. talking about TVT, Wax Tracks. That uh, Amoeba, like where they do the What's in My Bag and Henry Rollins does his. That, yeah. yeah. Was that chondritic yeah. sound, that label? Mm-hmm. It's like that kind of like. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Where it's just I mean, music, but it's dark and like disturbed. And you're like, what the fuck am I doing? I, I, need, I need hooked up with more people like and labels who are willing to put out like just goofy shit that I make. Like, I, I love that. Like, I, I can't ever. <laughs> That's out there. Friends. Those labels yeah. are there for you, dude. If you like, like, I can't I can't ever send my friends like harsh noise or power electronic shit that I do and go like, listen to this without them going like, you need help. Uh, uh, the, the, the two yeah, machine from, man, um, machine man would put that out. Yeah, the two dudes from uh, uh, Full of Hell just announced an album with closed caskets doing it. I listened oh, to the song okay. they put out. And What'd it's you think? Terrifying. I love it. <laughs> it's so me nightmares. Good. I won't poop for a month. Give me the whole album. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's so sick. With stuff like that, I'll literally just like. Well, I'll, I'll first of all I'll steal my girlfriend's AirPods from her because fuck it. But uh, um, I'll just take those and I'll like lay in the dark like this is the like probably the creepiest shit some fucking like buffalo bill shit you over here from me but uh i'll like I, I used to do this with the with the first slipknot record too i would just like take headphones or speakers whatever and i would lay in a room just completely like, on the bed or something completely dark and i would just like void of light and just listen to a record and absorb it like oh yeah no distractions or whatever and especially like if it was super unnerving like if I got to the end of a record and I'm like, I think I shit myself, then I'm like, cool. I love this. Perfect. I'm gonna listen like to your parents, more. your parents think you're sleeping, getting ready for school, but you're like up to like 2 a.m. on your walk, man, listening to like crazy shit. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what it was. I'm, man. Just, I'm just like, you ever heard this shit, man? I'm like, this guy's running a power drill through an HM2. This is fucking. Hard. <laughs> and my friends like don't like. I'm, I don't want to be like, oh, they don't understand it or anything. But it's true. Like if I showed them shit, I'm like, this is tight they're like no it's not and i'm like you don't get it and i sound like a 
prude, but it, it's, it's, a it's different... just, that's just, I don't know why I like it. It's just so I I'm into sound more than I am like music. And I love when people can take like different sounds and just turn them into this chaos. That's crazy to me. And so I love, I love noise bands and stuff. It's a different type of music, right? Like, and, and you have to, and to your point, yeah. like, talking about Miley Cyrus, you have to appreciate Miley Cyrus to be able to listen to something like a Mersbo or a Naminax or something like yes. that and say, okay, well, they have just taken what we conceptually put our brains, wrap, wrap our brains around as, as music and they move it to a level where it's almost abstracted to the point where exactly. you kind of wonder if it, you know, is it, you know, now we're starting to redefine the term of music itself. Yes. Oh yeah. And I, I, and I really had this idea. I'm like, you know, all these different bands I have, cause everyone's like, Oh man, are you just like starting fun projects as a quarantine? I'm like, I have every intention of playing shows with these bands. And they're like, that's, that's crazy. I'm like, yeah, but that means that like, I can play bands. Like I can play shows all the time. Like when that shit comes back, I was like, I have a band for every situation. And I was like, I can play a lot more. Yeah, I love that. Like, playing live is an adrenaline rush. And I'm like, I'm like, man, but I was like, I really want to do these, like this, like noisy stuff. I was like, but how am I going to do it? And so I would like go on YouTube and like, the first mistake is like looking up. I'm like, Oh cool. Harsh noise shows live. And I'm like, Oh no, yeah, this looks terrible. And it's like, Oh, this guy's got a, a, an old fender bass amp on a, on a card table. And he's just yelling into a microphone through some delay pedals. And I'm like, that's cool. Like that, that's pretty cool. I guess I'm like, man, if I'm going to start playing, like if I played harsh shows, I would have to really do something. And so I thought about doing like, I could have this big table full of like, cause I do all my stuff mostly on my computer. Like I just fuck with stuff within my you know recording rig and instead of fucking with pedals and stuff, but I'm going to build, you know, build this big elaborate machine and, and like full of pedals and stuff and work on stuff. I will never like, I know that like noise artists never play songs live. They just go and make a noise live. And so what I really want to do is make it real chaotic and just have like drum loops playing. But what I really want to do is project uh, the movie begotten on top of me. Oh my God. Now do... we're... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. And I <laughs> dude, that like opening scene of God just stabbing himself. Like oh. I, I would leave the sounds in there. Like I know that and oh. was, it's funny. I learned about that movie from static X. Like, uh, I forget what song it's in, but the beginning samples those like glug glug sounds from the beginning of Begotten. And I was like, because I looked up like some like different samples they were using and stuff, like the um, uh, the ones from like I'm with Stupid and stuff. And one was like, oh yeah, they sample Begotten. And once again, I'm like 15 years old and someone had uploaded Begotten on YouTube. And I'm like, cool, I'm never sleeping ever. Like, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a dark one. You know, you know, Jordan, I hate to do this to you, buddy, but we got to, no we, we got to, oh, we're, we're going to have, I'm going to, I'm going to text you tomorrow and uh, we'll, we'll set up this uh, other one. All right. Love that. Cool. All right. Um, l- listen, before you go, um, very excited for the nothing face thing we're going to do. Can't Love fucking that. wait for that, man. And uh, also oh, yeah. tell everyone where they can find all your stuff and all that real quick. We are on Apple music, Spotify, iTunes. We have a band camp, which we still keep up with i think even when we put out new stuff like we put out gray i i even put it up on our band camp um and you know uh twitter zone 0614 instagram zone 0614 i think it's facebook.com slash zone 0614 is our shit so essentially that's our handles for everything but we're pretty i think we're pretty active on all our socials and stuff so um i hope i hope the hardcore kids uh like this stuff i have a lot of friends who are like even in like the the hardcore scene who's still kind of appreciated i think it's and I hate the term adjacent. Like when people say new adjacent, I hate that. I think it's terrible. Um, stop doing it. <laughs> Those are do that They're like, oh, it's a new adjacent thing. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's all rock. But uh, well, you got to talk to Jay about that one. Yeah, I had this <laughs> argument with someone on on Reddit where they were talking about, well, what does that mean? I'm like, well, they were in the same scene and they share they share some of the same aesthetics, some of the same sound, but they're not solidly in the new metal world. And yeah, yeah, we, we can we just, debate this later. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't like the term new metal core, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. me shit, either. I yeah, hate it yeah. as well. That's dog shit. So, but yeah, everyone's we're pretty active on all our socials and stuff. But I I will I will gladly talk. Um, even the, the hardcore people, let's talk about uh New York hardcore, let's talk about Warzone or something, man. Like uh there you go. so but that's that's really it. So you find us Apple Music, Spotify, um, 
I know, I know a lot of you hardcore guys secretly like new metal, even though you don't want to admit it. Exactly. So, I love it. So a lot of, you know, a lot of people will say, Oh, I like the first couple of Slipknot records. And then they'll just immediately do the thing where they're like, I'm just kidding. I am a full blown new metal fan. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was like, Hey, Breed didn't open for Mudbane and Slipknot for nothing there, bud. So, um, definitely but yeah but this is this has been great like love talking to you guys so let's but yeah let's do this again this has been great yeah, man absolutely awesome. man dude dude looking forward to the record please put it out this year yes yeah, yeah. i'm trying really trying so all right man we'll we'll, we'll talk tomorrow all right sick looking forward to it later all right. guys all right buddy take Thanks, care jordan bye-bye 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 take care jordan bye-bye take care